All right, so this is a fight at Tepesit, which is in Patia. I don't get to fight in Patia very often. Um, I'm looking at these fights <laughs> a bit after. People say it's very hard to keep up with my fight rate. Uh, it's hard for me, too, in terms of doing the voiceover with my fights. So fight 178 right before this was 12 days before this fight. This is fight 179. Uh, 12 days later, down in Patia, the other one was in Chiang Mai, um, and I'm actually fighting Stamp. Stamp is now known as Stamp Fairtex. This is shortly before she moved to Fairtex, um, and she was Stamp Giat Bungern, which is her uh, dad's gym's name. Um, <laughs> Steve. Uh, at this stadium, you weigh in before the fight, and you need to weigh the same, uh, which is not the case in Chiang Mai, where I do a lot of my fights. Um, you do weigh in before your fight, like literally an hour before your fight in Chiang Mai, but just to see what your weight is. There's, um, unless there's an agreed upon weight that you have to meet, you just step on the scale to see what you're at. Um, at Tepesit, you have to weigh the same. So um, this fight was set at 49 kilos, um, and we weighed in the morning of. Um, and I can't remember whether I hit up to 49 or not. Um, but this is very shortly before Stamp moved to Fairtex. And then probably about a year after this, she was Stamp Fairtex. Um, but this is just before she made that move. Uh, this guy in the ring just won a belt, um, the stadium belt here. And so they were taking photos and uh, doing the ceremony just before that. It's very, very unusual for me to be able to fight in Patia. I probably have like maybe six or seven fights in Patia. I have to travel all over the place to get my fights because there just is not um, enough of a female Muay Thai scene in order to get the number of fights that I would want to be getting, which is why I travel around. Um, but I knew who Stamp was because I actually had seen a documentary that was made about her and another little girl named Pet. Uh, they were like eight years old in the video, um, or in the documentary. By the time I uh, was fighting Stamp, she's probably 18. Um, here she comes with her dad in her corner. And so I knew who she was from that documentary. It's called Buffalo Girls by Todd Kelstein. Um, but I, I hadn't fought her before. She, is, she came from a province over. Uh, so Patia is in Chonburi. Um, and then over from that is uh, Chantaburi, which is where her family lives. And uh, <laughs> like I was saying, I'm, I'm doing these voiceovers four years down the road. Um, so I'm going to comment on what I'm seeing, but also what I remember about the fight. Uh, I try to do voiceover like this on all of my fights, and it just was too hard to keep up. Uh, so I'm going back and filling in a gap. There's like a gap of um, <laughs> quite a few fights kind of in the, in the uh, late hundreds, early 200s that I'm going in and filling in. Um, so that's what this is. Uh, Tepesa Stadium's pretty cool. It's been around for quite a long time. It's just a local uh, stadium in Patia that uh, young kids kind of like get their teeth. You get your first belt as like a young kid at Tepesa and it's like you've established your local dominance um, and then you can kind of move on usually the boys will enter into Bangkok when they're uh, 12 13 that kind of thing uh, women don't enter into the Bangkok scene because uh, prior to 2021 uh, women were not being booked at any of the established Bangkok stadia um, in 2021 Lumpany started booking women under their banner um, as I'm doing this voiceover, women have not yet entered the actual arena because of COVID. Um, but they're fighting in a, in a studio that has the Lumpany promotion name to it, which is very exciting because Lumpany did not ever promote women prior to that. Stamp, having been like a, a young child fighter, if you watch Buffalo Girls, she's very young in that. Here she's maybe, uh, I think, 18. Um, her... her trajectory as a fighter coming from a child fighter into now the age that she's at here usually young women will be retiring or kind of petering off uh, she was very prolific as a child fighter she fought a lot um, and she fought around in the provinces in Assan so without Lumpany as a possibility for female fighters whereas it is a possibility for male fighters 
it's kind of uncertain where women are going to go or like what that what that future for them will be. Stamp is really the first uh, in that she got picked up by Fairtex and was promoted on one championship. And so she had this pathway that really didn't exist for uh, female fighters at all uh, prior to that. It happened at the same time that Channel 8, which is Hardcore and Super Champ, started promoting uh, women pretty hard as well. So that became another kind of um, possible future for young women um, as they have usually one um, female bout on each card and they have one each day of the weekend. So that's four women, um, two Thai women uh, each weekend that pays pretty well. Like it's, it's, it pays better than a fight like here or something like that. So it, it has a, a level of um, accomplishment to it that women didn't have a couple of years ago. This is also me fighting with my gym, Petrangrung, which I never ever get to do in the same way that I don't get to fight locally. I don't get to fight with my gym in my corner because I have to travel uh, for my fights. So there's a little bit of uh, pressure in, in having my gym in my corner because it's such a rare thing. Um, but I fight all the time, so it's, it's just exchanging elements of what's difficult and what's nerve-wracking about a fight all the time. So at this time, Stamp had a different style from what she has now that she's on one. Um, before she got to Fairtex, she was much more of a uh, Muay Cao clinch and knee fighter. Uh, so that's what we're going to be dealing with here, because this is prior to her going to Fairtex. Now she has much more of a like um, right cross, I guess. <laughs> she does a lot more uh, punching than she used to. This is round one, so we're kind of like feeling each other out. I actually really like this distance that we're fighting at. It's pretty close. Um, often I'll find myself too far away from an opponent, but because Stamp's not really a kicker, um, I'm able to stand in closer. This is a range that both of us want to be in, so we'll stay in this range together. Already we're clinching in round one. Stamp's really good at this turning thing, which is actually something I'm really good at, so we have a similar tactic and style that it's going to be like who who wore it better, who does it a little bit better in that range. Oh, that was a nice jab from her, very long. Uh, Stamp's father was a fighter um, back in the day. He was, a, he was a Bangkok fighter. So she pretty much grew up in Muay Thai. See her get behind me there a little bit? That's a really good position for her. And she's got my arm pinned. It's a very dominant clinch position. It's round one, so the, the scoring on that doesn't matter in the whole narrative of the fight that much. It doesn't mean you don't fight hard in rounds one and two. You can totally get the ball rolling, especially as a Muay Cow fighter. You want to kind of tire your opponent out, establish your dominance, figure out if there's anything in your game that they're solving so that you're not having it solved in the scoring rounds, but rather have it solved early so that you can solve the solve kind of thing. But because we're both Muay Cow fighters, there's a little bit of this like notching up very early in the fight, which is interesting. Down in the corner in the blue shirt is Pudi. He was one of my favorites at the gym. Uh, he doesn't fight anymore. He's, <laughs> he's very young and round and adorable. He would watch YouTube and like imitate all the very famous fighters. Uh, talking to me is Filippo. He's Italian. He uh, kind of runs his own thing out of the gym, but he was sent as my corner man. Uh, this is Alex Petrangrung in the, I think it's a Dickies shirt. You can see him coming out of the ring now. Um, some people know Alex Petrangrung. He's, he's one of the more famous uh, non-Thai fighters in Thailand on the, on the Bangkok scene. I'm going left there. That's something that Kevin's always getting me to do, so. It's good to see me starting to establish that four years ago. I'm still working on it now, so not solved. There's a right kick, right, I mean, a right cross, right kick from her that was nice. Both kind of clipped, but didn't quite land. You can see that she punches out of being punched already, which is something that she's really good at now that she's fighting on one. Um, but it's, it's like a nascent stage of it here. Both of us get in this kind of stale position, and I'm bouncing a little bit to keep the ref from breaking us. And we weren't doing anything, so he broke it. 
I'm trying to close her down a little bit, but I'm not really um, cutting off the ring. She waits for me to come in, but she's not really backing up that much, so it's a little bit tricky. Oh, she off-balanced me and then landed a knee into my, uh, into my body as I was falling. That was really good. She's quite, uh, she's quite tall compared to me. Open side kick, landed with a um, leg kick in return. Technically, my kick is worth more. Um, a, a high kick is worth more than a low kick, but it, each one will depend on what the um, effect is on the opponent. Neither of us actually looked very effective, so. <laughs> There's again, high kick for low kick, but I blocked hers, so that exchange should actually be mine. Oh. The bell right as I fucking get in there. The boys are so little. This is four years ago, and the boys look so little. They're like all very big and manly now. <laughs> it's amazing how much just four years, uh, what a difference four years can make uh, when kids are growing like this. They're probably, they're near Stamp's age actually. They're like um, 16, 17 here. So Kevin is telling me to punch with my right hand so that I can grab. The reason he's saying this is I grab for the clinch with my left hand. So if I punch with my right, you hit with the right and then you can come around with the left for the grab. Um, he's basically telling me to use the punch as, a, as an entry point uh, for my grab. But we're going into round three now. So we're gonna be fighting pretty much the way we are fighting because that's both of our styles. But going into round three, now this is a scoring round. So. Um, now whoever's dominant, now whoever's getting the, uh, the win out of each exchange is going to matter a lot more. That's Stamp's dad getting down from the ring in the red and yellow right there. She stays in really nice. So there's what Kevin was telling me to do. I did a little punch punch to grab. She's really good at um, bending herself she gets her head down low so that she can kind of like whip around and break my root and land these knees. These knees score. They're, Kevin and I call them rabbit knees because they're just fast. They don't actually have any uh, physical effect on the opponent. They're just points, but they're points. They're scoring. So it's, I don't mean for it to be this kind of like meh, meh, they're nothing kind of thing. Um, they feel like literally nothing, but they do score even, even uh, just at this level just getting your legs up like that scores. At much higher levels of scoring, they shouldn't matter, uh, like they shouldn't score, um, but I think at kind of the local level they do. So I've been burning the whole time, I'm the one coming forward this whole time, and she's not running backwards. See how she just like takes just enough space to stay at the same distance all the time? It's very well executed. Um, I think she's gotten a little bit longer uh, now that she's fighting on one because she loads up for that right hand, whereas here she's just kind of waiting to catch me. That was a nice, uh, her leg came up to block me on my way in. So my arm is stuck here against the ropes. Because my left arm was stuck on the outside, I couldn't really control which uh, direction to turn her in order to get better points. It was a nice body shot from me. Oh, left hook, and she missed on her return, but she fired it back fast. That was nice, dodge back and strike. See how she like bends me over to the side like this? Because her head is slightly above mine, that's a dominant position for her. If she was bent over and I was not bent over, even though she's the one technically controlling the position, her head is lower and it, it isn't a dominant position. This, is, this fight's a little bit close right now, um, because those exchanges were pretty even in that round. She actually had a much better second round than I did, but again, the scoring doesn't matter that much in rounds one and two unless it needs to later on. So now is the first round that really matters, and it was pretty even um, in the flow of that. Kevin's yelling at me to get off the rope. What that means is that when we're clinching and we get like pushed against the rope, I need to yank her to the center of the ring 
Alex is, <laughs> Alex is telling me to get inside position. You'll see people in the corner do this. And that basically means, uh, in Thai they call it Lai Khen, which means like shoulders and arms. And it means to control from the arms in the clinch. Um, basically, it's a directive to start taking control of the movement and the positions in the clinch, as opposed to just directly scoring. Oh, there's a lot of rabble in the crowd right now. It's very like blah, 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 blah. Here we go, round four. This is where if you want to establish dominance or if you have established dominance in round three, you like amp it in round four. Oh, I'm doing what Alex told me. I'm getting better control inside the arms. That should be my point there, that pin against the rope, uh, even with the ref breaking us. Her spinning around and landing those little rabbit knees, those all score, those are all points. That was pretty dominant for her right there, actually. Oh, a little bit too far for that right cross, but the kick I landed before that worked. Now my left hand is doing pretty well. I was controlling her arm, but she flipped, and now she's got kind of like a body lock on me, and she's landing these little rabbit knees. She's taking the lead in this round four. Round three was even, and as the exchanges are going right now, just even with these little rabbit knees, she's taking the lead with these little positional uh, things and then pops with the knees. Oh, that was a big one for me. Even if she has like these five little knees, if I land one good big one, it's like catching a big fish versus four little fish. The, the big fish is the point. Um, so if I can land bigger, uh, more visible knees, I can win out in these little rabbit knees, but often she's doing these little rabbit knees and I don't answer them, which is why they're kind of pulling her to the lead. Every time we get broken like this and I have to stand back up, it's not good for me. <laughs> it's not, it's a, that's a visible, I was put in a non-dominant position. Now my head's above, if you can see, my head's over Stamp's head. So even though we're in a very similar to position to what we've been in in a lot of these exchanges, with my head above hers, that was my position. Oh, I think she took round four. Um, round three was very even. Round four, she has a slight lead. So now round five matters in terms of like how it pulls out. I would have to go hard in the early part and establish some kind of dominance in round five in order to like sway everything. Team is telling me to not turn in the clinch. I have my, my side turned to her a little bit. So Kevin's saying I'm doing well with my left hand, controlling her in the clinch with my left hand. Um, if you saw the hands a second ago that were coming and doing this, that's City Choke. City Choke is a, a fighter. He was a fighter local to Patia, but he actually became pretty well known in Bangkok. Um, he was the head trainer at Max Muay Thai, maybe at this time, maybe just after this. Uh, but he was telling me it's very close. This means very, very close. And so he's like, push push for dominance in this round. I like my posture, I like, <laughs> I like my, I like my silhouette in this. So Stamp gets to do pretty much what she's been doing this whole time, but you can see that she's staying in a little bit more. Her creep back is less than it was in rounds one and two. Uh, if she had more of a lead, she'd probably go back to that little creep back um, she's already slightly in the lead, so what she has to do is less than what I have to do. I landed a right knee into her pretty well just there. Right hand, right knee, and now she's landing these knees without even grabbing me. She's just throwing them up. They're like the rabbit knees in that they don't, they don't feel like anything, but they do score. Now she's got this like rip overturn. That's a pretty dominant position, except I ended up on top, so that had a little bit of a reversal in it. Oh, right kick, right hand, right kick from Stamp. So you can hear the crowd, the like, oh, I, oh, I, her taking the side of me. <sighs> that was a good moment for me until she did that. So now she basically has taken the lead that she had and inched it just ahead so that the, what I have to do to take back a lead 
has become harder. It's become a like knockdown or like <laughs> that's, that's it's over now. With that with that put down, she's won this fight already. So um, my job at this point is to either concede, which Sylvie doesn't like to do, or just keep coming in and you know make it a hard fight to the last minute. That's like all right, we're we're gonna go to the bell here. Because of her small moments of dominance up until this point and then putting me on the ground right there, there's literally nothing I can do. So I'm just gonna take this as the like, all right, that was enough. Maybe it's close enough that I can win this, but she actually had a um, more visibly dominant moments in that round to give her the lead. Close, it's one of those things that's like close, but not close. <laughs> like, it's, very, very close, but not close. Oh, very loud. There's a lot of cheering going on. It's very exciting. Oh, they're taking a while to tabulate it as well. This is very unusual. Usually in Thailand, the, they look at it and they read it pretty fast. This must have been for a stadium title or something that they're taking so long to look at it. I'm asking them to fix my shorts in case there's a photo or something. You can hear actually from the rabble in the crowd that this is actually much closer than what I'm thinking of it right now. Like, if I were judging this fight the way I was watching it, I give it to Stamp because of those... Um, dominant moments in round five and that she kind of like took a small lead in round four. 49-48. 49-48 for Stamp again. So she's, she's already won. So 49-48, that's a close fight. That's, I think that was well scored. 49-48 is, is a close fight. I agree with the decision. That was totally the way that should go. Um, it was one of those things where like very, very close styles, the things that make a difference are just these little ends to exchanges. Like how did the exchange end? She got to the side position quite a few times, which is pretty dominant. Um, and then I just didn't do anything that was like visibly uh, notable enough to kind of pull me into the lead, even though it was kind of like close in those last rounds. Um, but this is the last fight that she fought under her dad's name, uh, her dad's gym's name. After this, uh, she moved to Fairtex, became a sponsored fighter. They were starting a female fight team and um, took on the stamp Fairtex name. And about a year after this, she uh, came on as a, as a one championship fighter, I think. This is 2017 in March. So if anyone wants to look up her debut, let's <laughs> how to do that. months or something. Um, I was fighting against Nong Stamp, who's from that movie Buffalo Girl. She was very little in that movie. She's like 20 years old now. Um, so that was kind of cool, because I saw this documentary of her as a kid, and then fighting her now, I recognized her dad and stuff like that. Um, it was a very close, close fight. Uh, I've heard that some people think I won, but I didn't do enough to take the judge's decision, so I lost this fight, um, which sucks. It doesn't feel good to win, but um, I feel like I was doing some things in this fight that I haven't been able to do in previous fights, so it is a step forward, uh, and it's just stuff to work on for the next one. So, um, on to the next fights in April. This is my last one for March, and we'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you for watching the live feed, and I get to go home with a five-minute drive, which is really nice. All right.